All right guys, so in this one, we're gonna be talking about sex influence traits. Um, last video we talked about sex limited traits, this one's gonna be about sex influence traits. So what's important about a sex influence trait, just like sex limited traits, they are inherited on autosomes. So we're not gonna worry about who has the X chromosome, who has the Y chromosome, males versus females, we're not gonna worry about that when it comes to actually inheriting the trait. Whether or not you show the trait is gonna depend on what sex you have. And what I mean by that is um, a, sex a sex influence trait is going to be ones that's uh, dominant in males and recessive in females or dominant in females and recessive in males. Um, and so when you're reading a question, um, professor might not have to say this is a sex influence trait, but as soon as you see dominant in one sex and recessive in another sex, you're immediately thinking that you're going to do a problem similar to this um, that's going to be a sex influence trait. So one thing that's really important when you're doing these kind of problems, I always like to make, um, you gotta change your notation up a little bit. In the past we've done like a big A for a dominant allele and a small A for a recessive allele. What we're gonna do this time is we're actually gonna make um, F plus and F minus or make an A plus and an A minus or something of that nature. Something that doesn't tell you dominant versus recessive. See how this is not the dominant allele, this is just the caped allele versus F minus here we've got the no cape allele. So what our problem is asking us in this situation is we're gonna cross two heterozygotes um, and we wanna know the chance that a girl will have a cape. Assuming this is a sex uh, influence trait and F um, and capes are dominant in males and recessive in females. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start off. I'm going to draw a Punnett square just like anything else. So we've got two heterozygotes are crossed. Um, so we're going to have F plus, F minus, F plus, F minus, and I'm going to go and do my Punnett square. F plus, F plus, F plus, F minus, F plus, F minus, F minus, F minus. Okay, so this is exactly what you guys were expecting. It's a one to two to one ratio. The question now becomes one to two to one of what, right? So we've got um, a three to one ratio here, assuming that the caped allele was dominant, but that's not the case here. So we've got, um, 1 f plus f plus 2 f plus f minus and 1 f minus f minus. So what's important here is when we're looking at this, we're not necessarily saying which one's caped and which one's not because we have to decide whether we're talking about a guy or a girl first and then we'll be able to go through these genotypes. So don't write phenotypes yet. We're just gonna write our genotypes and then once we decide what sex we're talking about, we're gonna go back through and assign based on which sex we're talking about because remember it's dominant in one and recessive in the other. Um, so we're asking about a girl, right? So we said it's recessive in a girl. So the only time a girl will have a recessive allele is whenever they have two of those alleles. Notice how that does not mean, this is really important here, the F minus is not the recessive allele. The F minus is the no cape allele, right? So we're saying that capes, having a cape, is recessive in females. So we're gonna look at the caped allele. That means a female, a girl, needs two F plus alleles, right? Because it's recessive in females, needs two of them in order to show that trait. So what that means is in a female, this one is caped, this one is not caped, and this one is not, right? Because our heterozygotes here, and this is where you're really gonna see the difference in the heterozygotes, um, because our heterozygote has one beard or, or one caped allele and one non-caped allele. So what that's gonna tell us is if it were dominant, then that trait would be shown. But like we said, in females, the cape is recessive. So what we're gonna look at here is we're gonna say, oh, the cape's recessive, so our, um, uh, we have one F minus here. So we have one no cape, which is the dominant trait because caped is the recessive trait. So as long as we have this dominant trait here in females, it's not gonna be. Um, so what we're gonna end up seeing is a one to three ratio of caped to not. Um, and in males, um, you guys can go ahead and pause the video. I'm about to work out what we would see in males with this exact same cross. If you want to pause the video and try that, um, if not, I'm going to take a hack at it. So we're going to have the exact same one to two to one genotype here. And always, always, always write out your genotypes before you even try and mess with the phenotypes. 
and our two heterozygotes. So there. So over here we're looking at males, right? So this was females, this is going to be males. And like we said, the caped allele up here is dominant in this case. So as long as we have one caped allele, we are going to show the cape. So we're going to have for a male, caped, caped, and non. So this one's the exact opposite, right? So we've got three to one. Um, three out of the four males, or 75%, are going to have a cape. 25% of them will not have a cape, and that's the exact flip of the females. Um, so really to bring this home, um, make sure you guys write out your genotypes, and make sure you don't assign a dominant or a recessive allele, because what students often tend to do is they'll say, oh, we're going to make the cape the dominant allele and the no cape the recessive allele, and then they'll say, oh, capes are recessive in females. So they'll assume that if you have two no capes, since we assign that as the recessive one, if capes are recessive in females, then our, this one right here um, must be caped, right? Because we said that that's the recessive one. Don't even mess with that, right? Don't give yourself a big A or a little A, nothing like that. Just have a caped allele and a non-caped allele. And then everything that happens is going to depend. The dominance factor is 100% going to depend on whether or not we're talking about males or females. So always do your Punnett square. You guys should be able to knock those out pretty quick. Get your genotypic ratios. Don't jump straight into the phenotypic ratios. Write out your genotypic ratio, take a look at it, and say in males, how many of the allele do I need, right? If it's dominant, you only need one. If it's recessive, you need two of those alleles to show that trait. Um, so knock out some practice problems. You guys should be able to catch on to this pretty quick. Um, thank you. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be sure no matter what genetics class you are taking. However, the concepts in this video are referencing material from this specific textbook. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sid Rich. You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during normal business hours. For more information about our services, please visit our website www.baylor.edu. Thank you.